Hey guys, Matt here today, getting back into John 5. And we looked at John 5, 1 through 18 last time, and we, we noticed some things. We noticed that there's a lot of coincidences in the Word of God. Well, they're not coincidences at all. There just happens to be an invalid man. He just happens to be laying by this pool by the sheep gate. Oh, isn't that a coincidence? What does he need? Well, he needs someone to heal him because when the pool would be stirred up, he couldn't even get in because everyone would beat him. And then by the time he would stumble over there or crawl over there, the, the swirling would be gone. Now, were people really getting healed? It doesn't matter. That's not the big idea. The big idea is he's stuck. He's paralyzed. It's a picture of his spiritual condition it's a picture of everyone's spiritual condition apart from Christ. So what is this invalid man who is laying by the sheep gate, by a pool, what does he need? He needs a good shepherd. He needs the shepherd. He needs the shepherd who is the Son of God, the Son of Man, who has the Holy Spirit without measure, who is the heir of all things, who can finally bring upon the blessing that is spoken in Genesis 1.28, be fruitful and multiply, he needs Jesus. So the Good Shepherd just happens to show up. He heals him. Just happens to do it on the Sabbath, right? Always poking the religious hypocrites in the eye saying, You have no idea. God's rest is fulfilled in me. I am the Sabbath. And in fact, he says, I am working. My father, rather, is working on the Sabbath, comma, so I am working. And this is what Jesus does all the time constantly making himself equal with God, hence the I am statements. We'll get to those soon. And so they want to kill him, right? Doesn't surprise us. The religious hypocrites are always the ones who want to kill the ones who really know God. And here is Jesus, God incarnate. And so uh, that's, that's a, a pretty brief synopsis of what's going on in, in uh, John 5, 1 through 18, 19. And one other thing, Jesus says to the man, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing should befall you. And if you're not careful, you might think, yeah, yeah, go and don't sin anymore unless you get paralyzed again. In fact, not just from the waist down, from the neck down, and you, you can't even move at all. And It's not what Jesus is saying. He's saying, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing fall upon you, meaning eternal hell, eternal damnation. He's saying you need to be born again, Mr. Invalid Man, just like Nicodemus, just like the woman at the well. It's a picture of his spiritual uh, depravity, his, his lost soul, his sin. He needs someone to wash away his sin. And that's what the healing symbolizes. That's why the healing is so important. You see, because if, if Jesus heals an invalid man and the invalid man walks around and says, Woohoo, I can walk, and then he dies and he goes to hell, not really that important, is it? If Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, and we know Lazarus loved Jesus, but if he raised a dead man from the dead and he ended up dying again and going to hell, it doesn't really matter, does it? If he opens the eyes of the blind, etc., etc., it doesn't matter if they receive a healing and then they die and go to hell. The healing is a symbol, a picture of their hearts. They need something greater. They need the King of Kings. So that leads us to uh, John 5, 19. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son of God, he's talking to the Pharisees who want to kill him for making himself equal with God, the Son, of, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. Now this is interesting. Jesus is going to do this a lot. He's going to say things like, I'm not testifying about myself. The words that I speak testify. And if you're not careful, you might say, okay, that's, that's weird, Jesus. What does that mean? What he's meaning is the Father. He, remember, he's the Word of God. The Father speaks through the Son. So when Jesus tells people who he is, He's not bragging. He's not testifying about himself. He's not witnessing about himself. It's the Father witnessing through him. Same thing with the signs and wonders. 
Jesus isn't doing them. It's the Father doing them through Jesus as a witness to say, this is the one you've been waiting for. Or have you? So, but, the, but only the Son only does what he sees his Father doing for. Now you're going to see a lot of fours in this section. The fours are kind of like the therefores. Uh, in Hebrews, for example, therefore, 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 always tying it in to the previous statement, for whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. Jesus essentially saying, I'm only doing what I see my Father doing. Verse 20, for the Father loves the Son. Of course, He's the good Son. So He shows Him all that He Himself is doing. Then a very important statement, in greater works than these will He show them. Greater works than these will He show them, so that you may marvel. I'm going to pause there real quick. We'll continue this section. But Jesus says, here's what He's saying essentially. He's saying, okay, do you see that invalid man that I just healed? That's nothing. I'm going to do greater works. But it's not me. It's the Father doing them through me because I only do what I see my Father doing. Elsewhere he'll say, I only say what I hear my Father saying. So what are the greater works? Well, I think by now we can clearly see the greater works are salvation. He's going to unpack that and the rest of this passage. But I want to pause here and just take you real quick to John 14 because there's a, a chunk in John 14 that sometimes can be confusing to people and rightfully so. It says this, he says, uh, actually, let's start here, let's start in 11, John 14, 11. Believe me that I am, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Always talking about the oneness, not that he, they're all one, they're one God with three parts, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Or else, if you don't believe that I, am the, that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, he says, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Well, that's confusing. Well, not really, because the works are testifying that Jesus is the Son of God. Because it's not Jesus doing the works, it's the Father doing the works through him. Now, verse 12 of chapter 14, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, comma, and greater works than these will he do because I'm going to the Father. And sometimes people might say things like, Oh, we're so pathetic. We should be, if we only had enough faith, it says right there we're going to do greater works. Jesus healed a few people. Jesus raised a few people from the dead. We should be raising people from the dead all the time. We should be giving people sight. We should, we should be healing people and getting them out of wheelchairs. It's our fault. We don't have enough faith. But that's not the greater works he's talking about. He starts here in chapter 5, and he says, that healing I just did to the invalid men, that's nothing. That's a tiny type or shadow of the greater healing that I will do. And greater works than these will the Father show me, Jesus says, so that you may marvel. Verse 21, for, another for, for, as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. The Father is basically saying here through the Son, he's equal with me. You, you need to come through my Son. You need to love Him and worship Him and honor Him. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent Him. The Pharisees, oh, they claim they love the Father, but they hated the Son. People do that today, don't they? Oh, I love God. I just don't love Jesus. Utterly impossible. You cannot love God unless you love Jesus. You cannot know God unless you know Jesus. You cannot pray to God unless you pray through Jesus. There is one intercessor between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Truly, truly, I say to you, verse 24, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me, the Father, eternal has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed away from death to life. 
Truly I say to you, an hour is coming, comma, and is now here. Highly significant. The day of the Lord has already come. It's come in Christ. The hour is coming and is now here, verse 25, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. This is the true raising the dead, isn't it? This is the true uh, giving life to those who are dead. Verse 26, For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. In other words, they're equal. Verse 27, And he has given him, Jesus, authority to execute judgment, because he's the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear the voice, hear his voice, and come out. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the re resurrection of the judgment. Big idea is this. Jesus is doing all these signs and wonders, and they're just types and shadows showing, I am the one who has the Holy Spirit without measure. I am the one who pleases the Father in all things. I am the one who meditates on the law and fulfills the law. I am the fruitful son. I am the good son. Adam was a bad son. Israel was a bad son. I am the good son. I always do what pleases my Father. Therefore, let me prove it. Let me show you. No, it's not me showing you. It's the Father showing you. When he feeds the 5,000, when he gives life to the dead, when he raises people from the dead, when he gives sight to the blind, when he heals an invalid man, it's all saying, you need a Savior, and I'm here. Now, the, the, the exegesis, the big picture, is always people. It's always souls. At the end of John 4, he says, look, the fields are white for harvest. What's, what, what's the, the harvest? People. Souls. People are lost. I'm going to use you. I don't need you, God says, but I'm going to use you to bring them in. So Jesus is showing, yeah, I can heal an invalid man, but greater works will I do. And the greater works are bringing people into the kingdom of God. And how is he going to do it? Through you and me, if you love Jesus. That's what he's saying in John 14. Greater works than these will you do. The greater works are bringing people into the kingdom. That's what Jesus' main focus is. That's what the big picture is. Healing is great. Signs and wonders are fantastic. But all they're doing is pointing to the Son. We have a bunch of them written down. We have the Word written down. We have all we need. Now we need to get going. Now, if, if my son gets sick, I'm going to pray for a healing. I'm not saying God doesn't heal anymore. That's not biblical. But the big picture isn't physical healing. It's spiritual healing. There will come a day, we're living in this already not yet time, already, we're all, the day of the Lord has already come, He's already giving us every healing we need spiritually, there will come a day when we will have that physically in the New Jerusalem. But this day, this day is focused on the spiritual. That day, that day will be, will be made whole and complete, uh, glorified bodies, no sin, no pain, no shame, no cancer, no disease, no darkness, no nothing. But now we're sojourners on this side of glory. Now we are strangers and aliens carrying out the work of Jesus. Jesus did greater. He says greater works are coming. Greater works are here. Greater works are bringing people into the kingdom of God. That's the big picture in John 5. That's the big picture in John 14. Jesus is going to do all these things to prove he's God. He's going to pass the baton on to his believers, you and me. Matthew 28, all authority has been given to me. Now go. Go and make disciples. That's the greater work. Peace.